I'll be recording this as well so that I can upload it on YouTube later. Still waiting for viewers. Wait, let me post it on Tumblr as well. My cat is right before me, so... And now she's sitting on my tablet. How wonderful. Baby, you should go back to your bed. Come on. <laughs> Mommy can't work if you sit there. Come on. Ooh. That's not your bed. Come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. It's not your bed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go back to your bed, okay? Go, go back now. There you go. There you go. And she's back to her bed. I'm full of fur. Great cat hair. All right. Still waiting for some viewers. Waiting for some viewers. Welcome to the stream! We're just waiting for a few more before I can start so that a lot would see. You can just chill there for a little bit. Mm. Right, right. Posting on Tumblr. There we go. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, people will see so that we can start. Mm -hmm. I hope you're having a good day today, fam. Oh, 
почта. Hello Sunlight! Welcome to the stream. I'm just waiting for a few more viewers before we can start. Okay. So we, ha we have two viewers at the moment. Ooh, grinding FFX IV. Ah, I also want to play, but I'm in the mood to do some voiceover tutorial things. So, yeah. Hmm. Oh, do continue with your writing. That's great. Stay motivated. Hmm, since we're waiting for viewers, I might actually just get some food. I haven't had lunch yet. It's already 12.25 in the afternoon here. Are you dears hungry? Because I am. TikTok. <laughs> You're spending your time well, TikToker. <laughs> Very well. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm also recording this, so I will upload it later on YouTube. Let's just get the viewers to five, at least five. Then once there's five people watching, I will start the stream. Go get some gnomes. Actually, uh, our house helper did bring me some food. So I do have fish and some s veggie soup. It's a healthy food. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, can you guys hear me? I set up the earphones. I'm actually using earphones. <laughs> so it's a little bit itchy on the ear, but yeah. Oh wait, I forgot to turn on the music there. Just a little bit would do. At least I don't want it to overpower my voice. So maybe 35 or 40 would do as well. Mm. 
Oh, don't worry, I will turn off the mic momentarily while I chew. So, it wouldn't be too... Uh... Strange to listen at. Hmm. Apologies later if the video quality starts decreasing. Somehow the internet today is strange once more. It keeps dying. Which I hope doesn't really go RIP again. That would be troublesome. Hello, Guru! Hello, Stellar! Okay, I almost mistook Stellar Pigeon as Sunlight because of the color of the uh, names. Twitch! Make different color variations, please! I had to take a double look. Okay, there's five people now. Okay, oh. Uh, it returned to three. Hmm. Hmm. People in the chat. Fem and PC sound like kitten. Stellar pigeon. Are? Guru, ah? Where's Guru? Oh, she disappeared. Guru, dear, you're there, right? No ASMR. I don't do ASMR. <laughs> that would be strange. I thought you disappeared. The stream chat is... <sighs> stream chat, you're not very honest with me. Users in stream chat. Your name isn't here, that's why I thought you disappeared. Apologies. <laughs> Stream chat, come on, don't lie to me. Anyway, shall we start? <laughs> okay, okay, we'll start. The music isn't too loud, is it? It's alright? Just have to make sure. Okay, okay. Good, good, good. Ikimashou! Okay. Firstly, we go get references, of course. Despite imitating art styles, I still look at references because one can't be too sure. Always have a reference image ready. For mine, what I use most of the time are his late uh, Nomura-san's latest work. But usually, I just look at two images. Well, now I look at two images. Back then, I only look at this. Uh, the the world ends with you key art with, Sto with Sora. I always look at this because it just... It's my favorite all in all. The colors, the lines, it's my favorite. Of course, you can... Uh, Use other artworks of Nomura-san. Uh, he has different uh, style as well, I guess. You have this with bolder colors and more bolder lines. Like, uh, okay, here is an example. He uses pencil brush here. I think that would be very evident with the lines while here he doesn't use pencil brush but he used literal pen brush so I think that's also one of the things if you prefer this style you can follow it uh, but for me I will be doing this coloring and lining style so yeah we will follow this one today I'm just giving this an example if you prefer other format of art of Nomura-san. We also have this with much more vibrant Disney-like colors. <laughs> Hello, Yoon! <laughs> oh my 
my gosh! <laughs> You're watching? Oh my gosh! <sighs> no, it's it's gotten louder. Wait, let's lessen that. The audio got too loud. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I also use this. If you want a more realistic style, yet still have that key art kind of feel to it of Nomura-san's art, use this as a reference. I'm using this as a reference for private uh, style studies. I'm gonna draw Nero in the future in this kind of realistic style. So, in a way, yeah, let's go! I, if you use Clip Studio Paint, you can drag your windows like this. Yeah. Wait, why is it there? No, 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 no. There we go. So the references I use are in this side. As you may have noticed, I also do this in my commissions. I put the references on this side, and I work on here. Anyway, first in the style study, we look at the face shapes. Nomura-san's face shapes for the characters varies. For example, here we have Beat. He has more chin, actually, while the rest has a little bit more heart-shaped chin. So, indeed, Cloud looks very, very cool, right? His pencil work, Nomura-san's pencil work, line work is just so aesthetically pleasing to look at. Bigakude. And... Okay, the face shapes. We're gonna do a semi side view. What do you call that? Quarter side view? We'll be doing quarter side view. Anyway, since we're beginning with, with a sketch, I'll be using design pencil. That's what I use for sketches mostly. We will be doing a bust shot, of course. For the face shapes, always start with a circle. That's how I do things. For the chin, no, not half a circle. Ah, this is kind of difficult. <laughs> but anyway, we draw the face. I think one important thing you need to remember as you draw Kingdom Hearts style face is the cheeks. There's always cheeks somehow, especially with the teenage younger characters. Cheeks. Them cheeks. Yeah, cheeks. If it's in quarter side view, the cheeks are not too low, not too high. Because sometimes other people draw like uh, the cheeks, it's too high, like this, too high, some others too low just make it in the middle so we're following Sora's face shape I'm actually going to draw my OC Garfield ah I didn't save his image anyway let's just say he has a uh, hairstyle similar to Devil May Cry 3 Dante, although a bit fluffy and wavy.
For the years, well, Nomura-san follows basic measurements for body parts and face parts. So, also, his ear shape is more uh, circular. Usually, there are others who draw ears like this. It's very thin, but Nomura-san always draws his a little bit more circular, like this. Which, by the way, I notice I did not follow in some of my works. I admit, my style imitation is not perfect. Alright, so rounded ears. Here, it's not very visible. Wait, let me get a reference that has a visible ear. Uh, Nomura-san, where is your reference images with ears visible? Here, I think this is a good one. See, it's... Here, the ear is really circular. Like, the width is... Thick. So yeah. Apologies if I I am all over the place. I hope you dears can still understand me somewhat. This is also a good example for the cheeks. See, it's not too high, not too low, just. On the middle but here he's almost almost facing sideways so that's also something to keep in mind Alright, now the ears is in place, the eyes, if you, you're not, if you're unsure as to where to place the eyes and the nose properly, you can do the cross thing in the face. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh gosh, I feel like a, a bad teacher. So, cross there. I think one thing to remember is not to let the eyes... Wait, something is wrong. I do not like what I see. Wait, let me just do a few adjustments. I don't like what I see. That's, of course, personal thing. So the crossing. One thing to remember when placing the eyes, never have them too high from the ears. You see this part? Line that up. Don't let the eyes go too far up. Don't put it too far down as well. Have the eyes placed just here in this outline. For the nose, the end of the nose, don't let it go too far down below the ears. There. Don't get it too far down. Don't get it too far up. It should align on 
right at the end of the ears. I just hope you dears can understand and learn something. Anyway... So you have the basic face shape, right? One thing to remember with Nomura-san, sometimes his necks can also vary depending on the body type. If, you have, if your character has the body type of Sora, of course, he has this uh, thin anime-like <laughs> neck. I can't explain it any other way. I just see it as an anime neck. While characters that has body types like Beat or Terra or Leon Cloud, it's best to remember that their necks are more realistic and thick. Like that. So remember, the neck and the body type varies. So. For Garfield, he's a teen, quite like Riku, so I think Riku has more uh, has a body type more leaning towards more with beat in his latest look in KH3. So, we'll be using that. Remember to add details in the body, like collarbone, cleavage, cleavage. What is wrong with me today? Anyway, now that the base face shape neck is done, we lower the opacity and start doing, well, a second sketch. I don't usually do a second sketch, but for this one, so you dears can, you know, get a better, more clear understanding, I guess. That's, yeah. To have a better, more understanding and look at how I do things. I usually just do one sketch, then proceed to line art. That's my process. But yeah, I think that would be too quick for you, dears. So, second sketch. We will start to shape everything much more properly now. The face being like that. My OC has a much more mature look, close to Riku, so... We might look at this for reference. He has a much more manly... What do you call this? Uh, blocky? No, not blocky. I can't really think of any other term but manly. So... He has much more manly features, like a strong jaw, like beat here. So we will do that. Hey, I deleted multiple layers. Just remember when you're drawing characters with similar body type and age as Sora, their cheeks tend to be squishy 
like this with semi pointy chin like that always remember that so do you see the difference It has softer, it has much more curves than strong lines like this. Just keep that in mind. Anyway, let's proceed. Okay, for the eyes, see, there's a lot of different ways that Nomura-san draws eyes. That also depends on shape, but... One thing that, personally, I do that looks and feels the most similar is... Okay, let me just draw it as I explain it. Let's not look at cloud for now. <laughs> Let's not look. We'll tackle it later. So... Here we'll look at Sora, his eye shape. His eyes is... What's the best way to describe it? There's a certain shape. One, two, three, and... There's the under of the eyes. So one, two, three. Usually Nomura-san does this kind of shape as I've noticed. Though the second line here tends to blend in with the third stroke. Kind of curves like that and he adds eyelashes. As for the top part, he continues it like this. See, you see that? He continues it like this, then adds another one. So basically, there's one, two, three points in this. Then he adds more eyelashes like that, but of course that comes in by the finishing touches later. And the personal... Uh, personal... format of drawing the eyes that I keep doing is adding this line, the second line. You see here it stops midway right. Of course that's also a preference. You can continue the lines up to here or you can cut it off right in the middle. It's a matter of preference really. As you see here it continues almost at the end, but not entirely. Wait. He has an artwork that... Where is that? Let me just... Here we go. This is the artwork that I know Nomura-san made that has continuous line up to the end and this is what I use mostly this format of drawing the eyes you see there's a line under there cloud also has it see this the line under the eyes so yeah it's a matter of preference I think but the line under the eyes keep in mind don't make it, don't draw it too far. Don't draw it too, 
too too close like that no there always needs to be certain distance and there should always be that invisible white line you see that there's an invisible line here so yeah Also, this line right here below the uh, lower part of the eyes, always remember to have the tear. What do you call this part? Tear ducts for the eyes? Uh, tear thingy. Oh man, I am bad at body parts anyway this is what I mean this this part this <laughs> there we go so always have that as for this part this part I just added that that's a personal touch again preferences he it doesn't nomura san really doesn't have that but i just added it for my own so without uh this huge black thing here the eyes should look like this there that's basically it. Then add the eyelid line. Then the eyebrows. The eyebrows, of course, it also varies from shape. There are eyebrows that are thick. There are eyebrows which are like Riku, where the thickness is at the end and it's thin at the start. Thin here, thick here, like that. Or you can go crazy, just make it circle. Or probably Taiga from Kuroko no Basuke. It's really, just have fun with it. So long as you got the eye down, I think the eyes is one of the most dis distin dis distinguishable feature of his artworks. Ah, oh, my vocabulary is running out. Apologies. Ah, uh, yeah, tear duct. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's so embarrassing of me. Anyway, let's proceed. For the other side, sometimes his eye shape tend to change if the angle of the face is almost turning sideways quite like this one it changes so an example would be I know this will be awkward to do but if your character is facing almost sideways like this like this Yeah, the eye shape tend to change. It becomes well, like that. Kind of like this. That's the best example I can give. But if you just want to play it safe, just draw a character that is facing forward or just tilting to the side a little bit, not too almost sideways. You can also do self-study on your own to figure out what shape the eyes become when it's almost facing sideways. So just repeat the process on the other eye. Thank you.
apologies, that was my brother. Repeat the process on the other eye. Of course, this is just my personal touch. I'm already used to seeing that there, so. If you dears also like my personal touch for some reason, you can do it as well, but of course, to each their own. So I'm just adding the long lashes just so you'll know how long the lashes looks and on female characters I will remove the lashes later as Garfield doesn't have that much long lashes All right, As if you feel like the eyes doesn't align, don't be afraid to adjust it. There. And then the nose. Strong noses. <laughs> Let's go for it. Strong nose. One thing to remember in drawing the noses as well, uh, the nostrils, sometimes it's non-existent. Yeah, it's non-existent. And sometimes it's literally just a dot. It's mostly there when your character is either a guy or a really, really manly guy. Or it's realistic like this one. Anime Gnosis! It's a wonderful thing. It can make your nostrils disappear. I don't know where you breathe. Anyway, there's another way of drawing noses. Of course, this is for the manly type character. You can also add more details if you want, like that, but that comes later. The other way of drawing noses is it has softer curves, like this. Quite like how you see with Rhyme over here and Neku, as well as Sora. Their noses have that much more soft curves and a tiny nostril. Ritiyu-san, I will tackle that later. <laughs> Don't worry. Just sit back, relax, and keep an eye out. Keep watching, and I will tell you what brush I use later. So, the noses. Over there. Now you know how the noses go. It's not that it's the most simple nose to do, actually. <laughs> the Sora, the types that Sora has. Almost non existent nostrils. Amazing. Anyway, onto the lips. Gosh, Garfield looked like a girl. I'm sorry, Garfield. I will fix you later. For the lips. I think it's best to remember that sometimes the lips can have certain curves. Sometimes the lips can be like this, as you can see in this image. It's like M. It's like an M. Then the line under the lips. Or sometimes it's just simple, like this one. Just, it looks like a cat, uh, cat lips. So, 
Again, this is within your preference. If you prefer the simple lips, if you like to think that your character doesn't have that much of a curved lips, go for this one. If you prefer your character to have a much more sexy, attractive lips, you go for this one. Anywho, since we're done doing the basic uh, face features, I'll be adjusting this now based on my character, based on how my character looks. I'll be deleting that and adjusting things. Again, Garfield has so much more mature and manly features, so I'll be making his face look a bit longer. His eyes doesn't have flashes, but I'll just make them a little bit smaller. Since my character Garfield has a much more droopy eyes, I'll be changing the eye shape to look more sleepy droopy. doesn't work. They're just finishing the adjustments. There we go. And a bit lower. Garfield doesn't have that much sexy lips. So I'll be using this kind.
so he had some earrings so just adding the details there I'm still not satisfied with the nose somehow how strange so adjust adjust accordingly if something doesn't fit your line of sight or preference His eyebrows is the generic thin brows, so I'll be doing that. Oh, one thing to keep in mind as well, don't make the eyebrows too far high up. That would be strange to look at. This is as high as the eyebrow will go. This kind of distance, don't make it too far high up here, that would be really strange. Also for the pupils, by the way. Since I follow this, I draw the pupils like this circle with a little bit of thickness in them thin at the top getting thinner in the bottom then that circle in the middle not not too big like this no not too small like that no just right then it has the second inner circle there so we'll be doing that as well that's pretty much how i do the eyes on my part there we go later in coloring this uh i will tell you how i color the eyes of course but yeah this eye this white part Never forget that. <laughs> That's important. It's too small. There we go. For the hair, actually I have nothing much to say for the hair. Really, do whichever hairstyle you wish to do. For here, I'll give him the hair, his hairstyle.
gotten too low. Ah, da, da, da. Stopped. Ah. Uh. All right then. After this, we start on the important parts. Line art. The line art, there's a lot of things to remember. Anyway, this is Garfield. He has uh, orange ish hair, reddish orange hair. Okay, now that the second sketch is done, on we go to the line art. Oh wait, maybe I shouldn't have deleted that. Yep. I will be releasing the raw file for this later in my Discord, so if you are yet part of my Discord, please join so you can get access to the raw files. Wait, let me just look for my Discord link. Here we go. I will not be merging the layers for you, dears, so that you can learn from it later. I will... Ugh. Oh, so that the man. Actually, there might be a problem if you're not using Clip Studio Paint. So, I will be releasing two kind of files. One is for Clip Studio Paint and one for PSD. You see, now that we're starting the line art, the pencil brush that I use to get a pencil feel, like this, since I usually follow the lining format of this art here. And coloring, I also follow this one. What I use is the real pencil brush. See, that's the real pencil brush, right? That's It looks very soft and all over the place, actually. What I use to make it look sharp, like a real pencil, I use the effect. Wait, did, do you dear do see it? Oh, wait, let me just adjust the window capture here, 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 here. Let me, okay, over there. So, what I use and what I do. Oh, hello, Sora Hikari. Okay, what I do is. As I line, okay, this is just an example, I will add the effect bor border of watercolor right here. And you see what happened? It's all black all suddenly with that kind of outer glow, which is black. Okay, what I do is I will adjust that particularly in this number range will be depending on the size of your canvas I use 1 or 1.5 or 2 that is again depending on the size of your canvas eh. I will be using 1.5 for this one. For the transparency effect and the luminosity effect, I always put it on 10. Exactly 10. Nothing else. 
Then for blurring widths, I use one or two, depending on your preference. But really, I just use one. Let's see, maybe I should put it to two. Okay, no, too thick. Okay, there we go. So range 1.5. Transparency effect 10, luminosity effect 10, blurring width 0.1. So look what happens. Look at this line. Look at what happens when I remove the effect. See? Let's zoom in. You see that? It has that watercolor stroke thing. Stroke effect. So that's what I use. You can make it to two. You can look at the difference. There you go. Or, yeah, just me. I just put it to 1.5, depending on your canvas. So let's start lining. Okay, I will tell everything to remember when lining, so I could just proceed and line quickly. <laughs> One thing to remember is the lines tend to play between thick and thin. That's one thing to remember. So the face line can be thick like this thick lines the face line can be thick but the inner parts of the face lines will be Thin, because if it's too thick, it'll be too strange to look at. As you notice here, Nomura-san drew a rhyme with that kind of thing in that kind of lining format in mind. Everything on the outside is thick, while everything on the inside is thin. Same as the hair. See, thick lines here, then thin lines on the inside. Sora is also the same. You see how. The lines tend to be thick, then it gets to, gets thinner. The what do you call this? What do you call that? Ah, the pen pressure. There, like that. Thick, thin, tends to happen. That lining format tends to happen on the hair a lot, like really a lot. See, thick. Thin, thick, thin. That tends to happen on the hair most of the time. But that's on the outer lines of the hair. Inside is just really, it's all thin. Except for the shading. Which also, the shading is also very important. You see that the shading, uh, the basic light source uh, light source the basic light source applies on the shading as well Nomura-san tends to do his artworks just with pencil that's why sometimes it looks messy sometimes it just looks really great ah <sighs> Wait, let me just let me just turn off my microphone. I'm gonna drink some water.
Hello. Okay, let's resume. Sorry, I got really thirsty. <laughs> ah. That's refreshing. Where were we? Oh, right. Little lines. Okay. That's one thing to remember in the lines. Okay, wait, let me just finish this uh, face line. Then I will proceed to the hair. I will not be shading yet. I will be shading after I finish the basic lines. So, there we go. Okay, I'll start with the hair first. So, doing hair. Try to do the line art for this a semi, just, just semi messy. Just semi messy. Not completely messy, like really all over the place like that. Just make it semi-messy to have it that realistic uh, pencil effect. Since Nomura-san does this line arts traditionally, then he scans it and colors it digitally. We are imitating that using a digital uh, medium. So, really capturing that truly, really, really realistic pencil effect would be difficult so I think it's uh, so I think that's why we need to do our part in making it feel realistically pencil like by lining it semi messy Fallen Devil. Thirsty for <laughs> correction. I am thirsty for Nero. <clears throat> Nero. Nero. I only thirst for him. Anywho, back to our work. Stroke, stroke, thick to thin, thick to thin. Pen pressure, remember pen pressure. There we go. What did it? Apologies. So there you go, thick to thin, thick to thin.
you see my lines isn't as perfect there are certain lines that doesn't look clean like this one that's because that's what I was talking about the semi messy lines to get that realistic pencil effect so it's not just about the brush remember drawing isn't just about the what brush you use it's also about how you use that brush <laughs> stay motivated There we go. I'm just gonna finish the hair. Earrings. Here. So just finishing the basic lines then. Thicker outer lines, thinner inner lines. Auto. So ears, ears, ears. Oops, not. I almost did some sh shadowing, <laughs> some shading. Ah, almost, almost. Not gonna talk about shading yet until I finish the basic lines. Okay, I think that's about late. He has earrings on both sides, purple earrings. Okay, there we go. Before I go on the face, we're gonna do some shadings first. Alright then, some shadings.
best to remember to always have your light source. My default light source for Kingdom Hearts style is here. So this is the back part, the shading, and this is the light source. Okay. So as I shade, that we will follow that light source. And as you can see, in this forma format of art that I follow, the hair shading isn't that visible. Yet, personally, I prefer it to be very visible like this one. That's why we will shade it accordingly to my preference. Of course, you can just follow this one where you don't have to shade the hair much, just the really, really back side of it, like that one, and that's it. That's all you have to shade. But for me, I like it to have a little bit more detail. Because as you know me, I appreciate detail very much. For this, I think it's best to practice shading traditionally on paper to really get the feel on where and how to shade properly using pencil. Because I think that helps a lot. Practice makes perfect. Remember, you cannot get everything on the first time unless, of course, you are a super genius in which, well, you're amazing. That's all I can say. You are amazing. <laughs> I see what you did there, Sunlight. I see what you did there. Anyway. So, light source. Because of the light source, we know where to color. If you are still having a hard time practicing where the light source is in even in practicing traditionally, you can look in the mirror, get the flashlight, get the flashlight. Literally, point the flashlight at yourself and look at the mirror. Where does the shadow go? And really, you will see where it goes. And once you find out where the shadow goes, quickly shade it in your sketch and until you perfect it. I did that once, but it blinded my eye. <laughs> Not literally, just like uh, my eye hurt for a bit. Then I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> so I took a figurine instead <laughs> and used a flashlight on that. Oh, which, yeah, that's also another thing you can do. Get a figurine, any action figure, any anime figurine you have. Use, use the flashlight on that, and you will see. Okay. So, shadow, shadow, shadow. Which also... Don't forget to add the shadow under the hair. This goes to the skin, this shadow. So, if you notice this one, this thick, 
this uh, thick to thin, thick to thin. What I'm doing is, as you can see in my line art, this. I'm just adding the shadow now. There. Thick to thin, thick to thin. Just adding the shadow in the parts of the edges. Like, really, it's just there. But of course, make it uh, align correctly. Because if you just... Uh, an example is... If you just did it like this, it will look weird. So make sure to align it perfectly. Like this. Thick to thin, thick to thin. Make it align perfectly like that. Okay? Make sure to remember that. And you see the hair and the lines look much more bolder now with the shadows and stuff. Thank you, dear, but I am not a wizard. <laughs> I'm just me. <laughs> I'm just me. Hi. Anyway, you already know the effect, so I'm gonna adjust the window so you can see the brushes I use. Since I think uh, the layers are also visible right here. In the stream window, the layers are still visible somewhat, though you can't see what I named them. I will name them later, since there's still just a few layers, I'm still not confused. Later, I will name them. I name my layers. They're my children. I take care of my layers. I organize my layers. Okay, let's resume. Uh, light source, light source, light source. Also, when you do a shading, never do shading like this. Never do it like that. Always do your shading with pen pressure. Be sure to relax your hand. Don't shade so angrily like this. Oh my gosh, that's... Unless you're doing for a stylistic kind of sketch, then by all means, go ahead. But if you're doing Nomura style, shading, relax your hand. Don't, don't be in a rush. Take your time. Art takes time. Just relax your hand and shade like this if you want it to be a little bit more heavier then just push it a little bit more but never like this oh my gosh so like that softly delicately as if it was a fragile flower okay I'm sorry if I'm speaking like this I'm just really feeling it if you know what I mean So, like that. When you shade, I did say gently, right? Except for the bold parts. There, you go angry, sure. But don't forget, again, the pen pressure. What I taught you earlier. Thick, thin. Go angry here, be gentle here. Like that. So, a little bit more shade over here. Thank you. 
sorry if I went quiet. I'm just finishing the hair, then we can proceed to the other parts. There. Then add a little bit more here, a little bit more here. Then that's that's about it. That's enough. If the hair is darker, in which case my character doesn't have that dark hair. That's why I made it a little bit more lighter in the shading department. If your character has a much more darker hair, this is what you do. You shade even in the top part. Don't worry, there's another layer. I can delete this. And you make it darker under here. There you go. If your character's hair is dark, for example, dark brown, dark purple, dark blue, shade it a bit more. Trust me, it will look pleasing later. Quite like what happened to Scald. See? It has so many pencil shadings. Then afterwards, it looked quite great. So shade a bit more, like that, then a little bit more, then you can go sideways like this, like you see in Skull here. Just a little bit sideways, but not completely like this, that would look out of place. Just a little bit like that, to get more uh, shading range. Then don't forget under here, just shade it like that. There you go! And as you can see, Skull here has those... You see this one? They used eraser pen digitally for that, just to add to add more strands, strand effects like like that. Strand effects. If you want the hair to have more strands, just add it like that, and there you go more hair strands. You can also add it under here. And here. Really, just have fun. Anyway, I'm going to delete that. Okay, on to the other parts. Wait, let me just delete this. It doesn't feel right. Mm. Yep, that's about it. Uh, for the neck! I think it's quite... Uh, visible here. Nomura-san shades the neck quite a lot, even here. I think that's also part of the signature look of his artworks. Always that dark shade under the neck. Always. You don't believe me? Well, let me get more art examples. Shade here, shade here, even here. See, even in his old artworks, there's always shading. Wait. Here, here. 
here, here. There we go. Of course, I'm gonna close these files later. You see that? That. Well, yes, Kyrie has a choker, but see? It always has that. Even here, this is one of his old artworks as well. Always the dark shade under under the chin, in the neck. Here you go, see? Always, always have that. If now, I think you may understand my point now. There you go. See here, he uses shading manual pencil shading on Sora's hair. I think that is evident. Then add to it some color shading digitally. It looked quite nice. See? Looked quite nice. Dewa Dewa. Yes, it is. He never forgets the neck shadows. That's why I noticed and considered it as one of his signature style. Always remember to shade just one way. Shade one way only. And then some neck bone. Some more shadows right over here. Shadows in the back here. Shadows here. Really, add as plenty shadows as you can. Make the lines pop. But also don't forget pen pressure. There we go. And for the clothing. I'm just adding my details. As you can see earlier, I said thicker lines on the outside, thinner lines on the inside. That's also important. Then Adjust your brush size, add some shades. There we go.
See, it's looking quite well. Now onto the face. Just line the nose. You may be wondering, why is the nose line so thick? Let me pull out an example. Where is that? For that, I'm I am basing it in from these artworks. You see this one? Aqua's nose? Yep. Pretty much. Even Sora has it. And here... Ephemera also has it. So, yep. Of course, you can just go thin, despite, you know, again, matter of preference. The eyes, one, two, one, two, three points. My personal touch. And the inner circle on the eyes. I do agree with Isabel. Back then, yes, the trademark is zippers and belts. But now... For some reason, he got tired of zipper and belts. Maybe he thought it was getting tedious to draw it again and again. So he went from that, uh, zippers and belts, to plate and buttons. Since buttons are just circles and plate are just lines. <laughs> so perhaps. Uni! Yes, Garfield is very, very handsome. I love my baby boy. He is a genius. He is a computer genius. Computer genius who just acts like a puppy most of the time. Despite being a genius, he is... An adorable, adorable sunshine, ball of sunshine. I am proud of my character. Another thing, the eyebrows and eye lines overlaps with the hair. That much is evident. As you can see here, it overlaps, except here. See it overlaps, overlaps. But for me, 
my personal preference, adding my own touch to it, I kind of erase some of it. Yeah, that's kind of my personal preference and my personal touch. Doesn't really change that much. It's just a small thing. Hmm. The eyes are too forward. There we go. Cute boy. Selective. <laughs> yeah, selective overlapping. But I think here it's understandable because Nomura san wanted it to be more realistic, as it is very evident in this piece. Yes, it is realistic. So I think having the lines overlap too much with the hair would be too strange. So he tried to limit it somehow. Emphasize on somehow. Because, as you can see here, it's very much still overlapping. He tried his best. <laughs> Indeed. So, as you can see here, I used thin lines on the lips. Not too thick like this one. As for the nose, I gave him nostrils because <laughs> I want my baby boy to breathe. I don't want him to die. <laughs> In which case, Neku, you are amazing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I sound like I am nitpicking at this point, but really I'm just enjoying things. Of course, this style is also really adorable if your character is a uh, female and a young boy, like exactly like Sora and Neku. But for Garfield, I think it doesn't fit him because he looks mature despite being only 17. He is very tall, he is 6'1", so with mature features, so I think that explains a lot. Isabel, excuse me, how did you know that? That's spoilers! You're not supposed to say that, but how did you know that? Oh my gosh. You dears! Oh my gosh! Oh, oh, okay, okay. Never mind me then. <laughs> I understood something else. I thought, yeah, never mind. <laughs> You dears are bullying Neku too much. <laughs> you poor, you bully poor Neku.
Poor Neku. <laughs> All right, now... Wait, let me just get this eyebrow done. All right. There we go. Wait, let me just adjust the head. It, it looks quite strange. There we go. You see the difference? This is without watercolor effect. This is with watercolor effect. There's a huge difference. So, if you're not using Clip Studio Paint, I can't really tell you which brush to use. I think that would be up to you to experiment and find a brush that would fit your uh, taste that looks as close to a real pencil. There we go. All right then. Shall we proceed? Okay, for the final touch in the line art, there's one more personal touch that I add. You see how the outer line seems to have really particular thick lines as if it was an outer stroke. In Photoshop, I think that's an effect, the stroke. Dear, I am using real pencil. Look at the window now. Look at the window. Look at my tools bar. Pencil. Real pencil. Over there, dear. I am using the default inbuilt Clip Studio Paint Brush pencil. Yep. You're welcome. No, 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 no. For my personal touch, which again I am following in this piece, there seems to be an outer stroke using pencil as well. So, here is the tip. Do not use a stroke effect. You must stroke everything on the outer of the character that you're doing. Stroke it manually. I'm not kidding. You must stroke it manually. No shortcuts. No shortcuts. If you have to make that pointy, use a razor brush. No shortcuts. <laughs> okay. Really? Photoshop never crashed on me before, even if I used stroke. Again, remember, no shortcuts. If you do shortcut, 
it will look very strange. There we go. For the stroke, for the thick stroke, I use design pencil because it has much more bolder lines, unlike real pencil, which really it is a real pencil. So design pencil, it still feels like a pencil, but it's ink, as one may call it. Its thickness and opacity is much more bold and visible. Okay, I forgot I still haven't saved since earlier, so that was close. Okay, over here. And make it pointy. dedication no it's not exactly dedication more like if you want the art to be to look really as close as possible to Nomura-san's if you really want to get that canon looking art style effect you really must work on it like Hard work. But I guess, yeah, in a way, it is dedication. Apologies. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, there we go. And there you have it. See? Ta da! The line art is done! And it's looking great so far, don't you think? Cat ears, not exactly, but I think you can use the pointy side of Sora's hair as reference, like this. I mean, you can just... Okay, let's make an example for Garfield. This is another layer, so... This is Sora's hair, right? We used that as an example. Oh, wrong pencil. We'll just make it like that. Don't make the top too pointy as cat ears tend to look softer. Then...
quite of like that. I'm not really sure, but I think it's best to just experiment. Apologies if I'm not much help. I just... This is how I would have done it as well. Just so you know. That's pretty much it. So... Yep. That's how I would have done cat ears. And just... Add some shadings. There, shade here. Shade there. It actually looks so adorable. I agree, I agree. For the thicker part of the line art on the outer edge, would it become thicker or kept more thin? What do you mean? Thicker part of the line art? <laughs> he does have three ears. Wait, let me just complete it and... He looks so adorable, excuse me. He just... He looks absolutely adorable. Cat ears fit him! He's so cute! <laughs> My baby boy is so cute. Look at him. Baby so cute. Anywho. <laughs> Would the cat ears line be kept thin like that or thicker? Oh, you mean the cat ears. I think how you line art the rest of the body the face is it also applies to the cat ears so wait let me undo my deletion so i guess it goes thick here and it goes thin. The pen pressure. Just use the pen pressure again. Then for the fur on the ears, I think how you line art the hair also applies to how you line the fur. Kind of like that. Yep. Okay, let's resume. Okay, time to line. <laughs> First sketch. Second sketch. <sighs> I need more coffee. Line art. I guess this doesn't really consider as line art if you think about it since it's still pencil. <laughs> but then... As we artists who is trying to imitate Namura style, we call it a line art. <laughs> it's strange. You're welcome. Also, be right back. I'm just gonna go eat a bit. I'm just gonna mute the microphone so I can nom a bit. My food is right before me, so I'm hungry. <laughs> be right back. Give me at least 10 minutes. Let me just finish my food.
time to do the colors. Is everybody still here? Say hi. Colors. <laughs> Hello, Zen. Yes, it is time to color. Oh, actually, I'm recording this right now. I will upload it on YouTube later, but I, I am muting the music, so beware. There will be... Oh, wait. Actually, there will be music, but since we don't know how, you know, copyright works, I'm still scared my video get, might get flagged, and my voice... Well, you see, my voice, if I am not talking, I don't know, <laughs> we'll make it work somehow later. Let's just hope YouTube doesn't flag it. Since I am using Kingdom Hearts music and that's copyrighted, we'll think of something. I'll ask my friends for help. Um, how to upload this without getting copyright strike. <sighs> if it doesn't get uploaded to YouTube, I might upload the, the file. Sorry about that. The fan, the fan. So yeah, let's hope, if it doesn't get uploaded on YouTube, if it gets copyright strike, I can just upload the file on Discord where you can download it on wherever link I put there. You can just download the file along with the raw file of this artwork I'm doing. Alright, okay, let's begin. <sighs> Firstly, I always select multiply in the line art. I I make the line art uh, layer effect blending mode into multiply. Now, again, since I I have told you dears that this is the artwork I always use for my personal Kingdom Hearts uh, artworks, as well as commissioned Kingdom Hearts style artworks. I also uh, choose the colors from this. So basically, this is my reference and my color palette. Color palette. Color palette. Video game music is a little bit easier to dodge. Oh, well. Video game music. Um, hopefully. With lyrics. I did not know that, actually. Well, if you dears can help me. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Then we just have not to use Utada-san songs. Well. Let's hope for the best. But yeah, another way is I could just upload this on Mega, 
Mega is. I have an account in Mega. I could just upload the, f the video file there, which is. This is going to be pretty long. It's already 2 hours and 22 minutes. Now, 23 minutes. Okay, let's go. Let's just hope for the best. If you dears can help me by telling me how to set up the video descriptions and settings in YouTube, I would I would greatly appreciate it. I'm not very good at editing videos, that's why I'm just gonna upload this raw. Anyway, let's begin. Ah, oh, electric fan. I hope you dears can hear me, the fan. I hope the fan isn't blurring my voice. Okay. For the colors, since Garfield is awfully, awfully pale, We will be using my memory is blurry. Ah, I see. That's her name, Shiki. My memory is blurry. I am so sorry. Shiki. Yoshia? Beat. Rhyme, Neku. Okay. Since Garfield is awfully pale, we will be using Shiki's skin tone. And do you see this? These pixels. That is actually going to help you with choosing your color palette. All right. Mm -hmm. You see this light one? This is what I always use. Particularly this pixel in all my artworks. If you notice characters that has lighter skin, especially in my commissions, I always use this particular pixel. Okay, let's go. When I color, I don't do manual uh, selection and brush. No, 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 dear. This is how I do things. You see that? Since the lines are thick, I can just filter. Oh, no, no, no. Select. Expand selected area. Uh, two pixels. Okay. Then invert selection. And there you have it, it's already selected. It's that easy. Then you just fill it up. Skin. Or base, it's either. Okay. By this time, I've already started. Oh no 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 no! By this time, I've already started to name my layers. Let me just zoom it in so you dears can see it. We'll zoom it in. There, just temporarily. I'll put it back to normal later. See that? So this is the base color, which we will be filling out now. And this is the line art. Later, we will be creating a folder. Clip that folder onto the base and create a new layer inside that folder and everything 
all of the colors that you put here and do here, it will stay in the base. And that makes it so much easier. Okay, I will return the window size so it's uh, normal size. I'm running out of vocabulary. I'm so sorry. All right. So firstly, we, well, I, I always do the blush first. And yes, even guys, even male characters have blushes, although their theirs are very, very, very light. Like this one. Neku is not vi that visible, but there is some. If you look very, very, very close, there is some. As for Yoshia, there is some in this part here, but it's not, it's, yeah, it's hard to see if you don't look closer. Even Beat has one. See? Here. Just in this side. But because I like adding blush, personally, I just do it. Male or female, I add it. And the brush we use to color, well, I use to color, uh, I don't think you can read it. This is the brush I use. Let me just zoom in again. I don't think you dears can read it because it's a Japanese uh, named brush. But yes, this is what I use because it has that watercolor effect. And as we all know, Nomura-san has a watercolor effect brush. Especially in this one, it has that watercolor effect. But of course, there's another brush you can use. Mine, personally, I just use that watercolor brush because it's my favorite. There's another brush you can use. As you can see here, he doesn't use that watercolor brush. He uses a simple brush. But again, in this part, Oh wait, you didn't see that. Ah, muzukashine. I'm sorry. You did, I forgot to zoom out. You didn't see my example. The watercolor brush, there's a lot of artworks of Nomura-san. He uses watercolor brushes. But there's also certain times he uses normal brushes. I'm going to show again the example and put it back to its normal size. Okay, that's too small. There we go. Here's the example. Here Nomura-san clear, clearly uses watercolor textured brush, which is what I use. I use watercolor brush because I like it more. He also uses it here as it's evident with the texture. As for his other artworks like this one, if you look closely he is not using watercolor brush. Instead he is using a normal shaped brush. And the brush I use for that, to imitate that uh, simple brush, is this one. 
it's also in Japanese. But it reads oil pastel. So it's an oil pastel brush. And because we're doing how I do things, we'll be using the watercolor brush. Alright, let's begin. Adding the blush. Be sure to blend it in. Like makeup, blend it in. There we go. And add it on the other side as well. Be sure to blend. Press hard, then light. Blend. Press hard, then light. Light. Blend. There we go. And there you have the there you have the blush. Oh, it's in Clip Studio Paint. I think. Hmm. I'll uh, I'll add the links later on the Discord server, so you dears can download it as well. Okay, let's resume. I download all my brushes on Clip Studio Paint Assets section. That's why I highly recommend Clip Studio Paint. It is wonderful. It has almost everything, especially when you're using Clip Studio Paint X. It's amazing. That's all I can say. It's really amazing. There's so many free brushes to use that's really great anywho let's proceed to shading the body after the blush I also select another one for the shadows and shades if you're going for a skin tone with more pink undertones, you use this pixel right here. And if not, if you're just going for something yellow, uh, yellowish undertones, you go here, select these ones. So yeah, that's why I said pixels. These are important. Even if they're JPEGs, they're very important. As for Garfield, I'll be using this. It's not too yellow, not too pink. Alright. As for the shadows, follow the light source. The light source is over here. So we just follow that as always. Also add that little shade under the eye there. It just makes the eye pop a bit more. I know I'm talking like a makeup guru, but I'm not a makeup guru. It's really just how I color the face. The eyes. There we go. Light source, light source. Of 
for the nose, I think I'm following this. Uh, where where is that? Here. I always do this touch on the noses. I know I'm following the color for this artwork, but I also like this format of doing the nose. That's why I press hard, blend, then press hard again, then blend. Then after blending, just then will you add the shadows for the nose. There you go. Or you can just leave it like that. It's up to you. For the face, I think it's important to remember the face doesn't have that much under shadow. Like, if you can see here, there's no shadows over here. No, it's just like that. Even in Sora's. See? So I think, yeah, I'm gonna delete that. <laughs> and more shadows over here. The ears, I think it's best to give that some gradient for that pinkish ear kind of thing. There we go. The music stopped. Why did it stop? Anyway, for this, wait, I'm sorry, my brain is processing. <laughs> ah, right. Okay, for the face, there's also this slight gradient, as you can see here, it's light and here it's dark. Just add a little bit of gradient on the face. Just use your soft brush, airbrush. Dab a little bit and dab another bit. Just dab it a bit. Yep, that's enough. Just give that a little bit of gradient. And when I say a little bit, I meant really a little bit. See? There's that gradient. I think you can notice it as well. Okay, now on to the lips. On to the lips, I think... Which pixel do I select? Just find a pixel that is closest to slight pink. Slight pink. There we go. Since it's the lips. No, that's too orange. Okay, that's good. Because as you can see here, even ephemera has that reddish pinkish shadow when it comes to the lips in Skull she really has a lipstick on for the shadow under the lips
we use this shade again. Use a yellowish tone to blend that out. There you go. Of course, for Sora, it's much more lighter, but I think it's also up to you if you wish to make the shadow under the lips more visible. I did a big oopsie. I did a big oopsie. Yep, I did a big oopsie. Anyway, I almost, almost blended it all together. And I did say that I am not going to blend all the layers. That was close. That was very close. A habit. Hello, you kippy. Welcome to the stream. I'm still doing Kingdom Hearts style tutorial stream. And now we will proceed to the neck. As for the neck, since Shiki's neck isn't visible, we will be using the shadow on her arms. So select that pixel tone. Or you can also use the shadow on her hand since it's dark as well. See? So there. Now once you chose your color, we go back to Sora for reference. So it's just dark on this part. There we go. Be sure to blend it. Always remember to blend. Blend, blend, blend. Pretend like you're a uh, Jeffree Star. Just pretend to be a makeup guru. Exactly. There we go. Shadow. And yeah, we should darken that a little bit more. So let's go add another shadow layer. Okay. Let's find a much more darker tone. I think this is dark. Yep, this is dark. Now let's shade that again. There we go. Now 
and it's starting to look somewhat Kingdom Hearts-ish. Somewhat, since we are not done yet. And for the finishing touches, it's best to look at their n here. For Neku, there's always this white one, wherein Sora doesn't have one. But, personal preference, I am following this one. I always add a white highlight on the nose and lips. Not really highlight, I guess it's more of a shine. So we are going to add that. And on the lips. There we go. There you have it. Oh! Well, perfect timing. You are in a Kingdom Hearts tutorial stream. It prepared you for what was to come. Thank you, Isabel. Okay, now on to his hair. Now this is going to be a little bit challenging since his hair leans towards more of a brick orange brick orange tone. So it's going to be a challenge finding a pixel that has that color that I'm looking for. Brick orange. Hmm. And we will only search it here, nowhere else. Wait a minute. Where to find a brick orange? Brick orange. Ah, here. There's a merge of these two. No. No, it's too orange. I think this is good. Okay. And now we go to the folder. Now we color it. You know what's great about doing Kingdom Hearts style artwork? You don't have to worry too much about the color, you know, getting too messy looking. Because the line art is thick, it can easily hide that uh, imperfection. <laughs> yes, I am cheating. And it's fun to cheat when you're hiding the imperfections of your coloring strokes. I am but guilty. Thank you, bestie. Cheating is the only way. <laughs> I am guilty. <laughs> Hide the imperfections. Hide it! <laughs> so, in makeup terms, the line art is like the concealer to your blemishes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm such a bad example. Ah, thick line art. Thick line art is so fun to color. Hide 
the imperfections. Lol. <laughs> You know what I mean by hiding imperfections? This. Do you see how messy this is? It's so out of, you know, out of line. It's so messy. Even the ears look. <laughs> I am hiding it. It is but an illusion. Let me just finish adding the color for the hair, the base color, I mean. All right, then. There. Eyebrows. Don't forget the eyebrows. He also uses hair dye on his eyebrows. His hair color is not orange. It's not brick orange. His hair color is white. Literally blank white. Don't tell me you cheated. Oh, <gasps> yes. <laughs> I didn't cheat in my finals. You know why? Because I never had to deal with finals. I never graduated. Sad story. Right, right? Exactly. This is why it's fun doing Nomura style because of the thick line arts. Okay, let's color the shadows. But firstly, we have to select a dark color since his hair is more of a brick brick orange the shadow will lean more towards brown uh, is this okay no this let's see so yeah experimentation about the color palette yep i think this works Make it a little bit more red. Yep, this works. Okay. Coloring the hair. As you can see here, the, the colors are fairly simple. Yep, fairly simple. You don't have to make it too detailed. Unless, of course, you wish to follow this. In which we... I will be doing. I prefer this kind of coloring on the hair. So we'll be doing that. Firstly, get the gradient. Put the gradient. That's just here for later. After you put the gradient, put the lights, some highlights. Highlights can be random colors because if you see here, Yoshia has some purples and blue. So that's what we're going to do, despite his hair being 
uh, ash blonde. Always put that random color. There we go. Yes, I'm drawing Garfield, girl. Come on. My baby boy needs spotlight sometimes. <gasps> Yuki P. <gasps> oh my gosh. Hello, Wilson. Thank you. Garfield is my precious, precious OC. He is a genius. Literally. He is a genius. But to what extent? Nobody knows. He may be a genius, but he's really childish in certain ways. Childish in an adorable way. Almost like a puppy. There you go. Now on to the second shadow layer. Since I'm following the shading format of the hair here, I'll be adding these. Following the light source. Make it a little bit more purple. Less saturated. Then this. Add this. Select the base color again, then add those strands. There you go. Add the strands. He will be recognizable once the colors are placed. Okay, and there you have it. Wait, let's add a little bit more here. Okay, there we go. Now, time to add the white. By white, I mean this. There's always this white line. So we will be using that, of course, it must be 
where the light source is. It must not be against the light source. Okay. Then a little bit more there. And then you add a final color in the hair, which is the blues or the purples in this artwork. There's always that uh, back color, which is purple. You see that on Sora's hair, on Beat's hair, and Beanie, on Yoshia's hair, even on Shiki's clothes. See? There's always that purple tone. So that's what we'll be using. And for this one, I always select the color here. So we will be adding that. There you go. Be sure to make it gradient. And for the skin, you can also add it. But here, it's not that visible on the skin. Well, maybe except for Yoshia. Oh no. The purple is under his hair. <laughs> Shiki has a little bit of purple here, but I guess... Hmm... Do I put it? Let's see if it fits first. Again, experimentation is also the key to perfecting something, as experimenting is also a form of practicing. But dears, always remember, no matter what you do, if you want to practice, there's a lot of ways to do so. And if you want to practice by tracing, I'm gonna say this, if you want to practice by tracing, do it privately never post it publicly. If you just wish to get used to the shapes of the face or the eyes, always do it privately. Never post it. If you will post something or even profit from something, never use a traced artwork. You understand? I vehemently despise tracing especially when people use it to gain income that is low anyway back to the artwork Three. lovely okay okay back to the artwork now the hair is done you could check it if it looks good enough. Look at the reference images and try to see if it feels similar. If it feels nice enough. If it does, then great! You're doing good!
Indeed. That is very sad. Very sad. But also, a little bit of me is annoyed when I see that. So, yeah. That's why dears always practice. Practice makes perfect. Every amazing artist out there always practiced to get better. There's no other way. Take your time. Practice. Art takes time. Never take shortcuts like tracing. Don't. Okay? You will be an amazing artist. Just keep practicing. I believe in all of you. You all have talents. If you have the heart for it, if you have the motivation for it, you can do it. Okay? Fighting! Alright. Baby boy looks so adorable. <laughs> okay, the purple fits. Just right on this part. So... I'm not going to remove that purple. It's going to stay there. It actually looked nice. Ah, there we go. That's the word I was looking for since earlier. Backlight. Purple backlight. Always look at the reference image you have of Nomura-san's art. If he adds a backlight to his works. Here, it's obvious that he has pink and purple backlights so yes see pink backlight and purple as you can see there here it's blue backlight see it's a blue tone there you go Only cheat with thick line art. <laughs> True. If you're a person who's very unsure about your lining skills, at start, you can use thick line arts, then you can evolve as time goes by. Cheat. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, that's right. <laughs> Only cheat with thick line art. <laughs> okay. Onward to the next step. Clothes. Okay. Garfield's sweater is cream colored. If you see Japanese schools with those cream uh, sweaters, sweater vests, yep, that's the color of Garfield's sweater. So, let's, here we go again, searching for the proper tone. Is this okay? No, that's too yellow. How about this? I think that's okay. Okay. Let's go! Oh wait, that's too light! Hmm... Let's search for something darker... I think this is darker. Hmm. No. Let's see. That's too yellow. That's too yellow. Hmm. How about here? Ah, there we go. Perfect. That's great, actually. That's very, very great. Take time to practice. You will perfect it.
Okay, time to select the shade. Hmm, there we go. Sweat off. Good boy. For the clothes. Oh, my brace hurts. Hmm. Not my brain, I said my brace. It's been a while since it was adjusted because of the ECQ happening. The dentist couldn't open his clinic. And my brace hurts. The metal thing, the thin metal thing, uh, it gotten longer and it's poking the in the inner, the inside of my cheeks. And it's... It's ouch. Yes. Itai desu yo. Mo, tukareta no... Boku no chikku ga itai no no ni. Ah. And the dentist have yet to... Open again, so... Anyway, back to the coloring. For the shades and shadows of the clothes, it's also best to look at reference images of folds for the clothes. It will help a lot, actually. Here, I'm just doing it random because it's not that uh, visible since it's just a uh, headshot. So, I'm just coloring it randomly but always remember in clothing find a reference image with the proper light source that you are using in your art and look at the folds there it will help a lot or if you have a wide imagination even if you don't use it if you even if you don't use reference images and you can imagine where the folds goes, then that's great too. Ah, we're almost done. And that's the shirt. But don't forget the white. Always the white. Like this one. See, they also have whites in their clothes. So, white. Hmm? There we go. And the purple, the purple backlight. Almost forgot about that. Purple backlight, there we go. Then lastly, the eyes. This is where the fun begins. Well, actually, the fun already be began hours ago, but you get what I mean. 
Yep, I will be uploading this file in Clip Studio Paint file. So for the eyes, we use Sora as reference for the colors. So, white over there, clip, clip that layer, and this, shade it, add the shadow. There you go. Then another one. Create another layer that would be for the pupil. Also, don't forget to listen to Nero right over there, the GIF that's been playing for hours. <laughs> if you like my work, look at what Nero says. Of course, that is optional. Desperate times calls for desperate measures, so I do apologize if I do sound a little bit uh, annoying for bringing that up. The eyes are staring at so... I mean, if it's Sora, then yes, his eyes are staring right in your soul. He can dive into your heart. I mean, that's literally what happens in game. <laughs> okay. Garfield's eyes are purple, so we just have to find a purple tone, which is not that hard. It's already all around the place. So there we go, purple tone. He has a beautiful purple eyes. <laughs> well, considering Sora had already matured, who's to say he wouldn't grow up to be like Cloud, hmm? I mean, he almost had the same personality with Cloud when he was young. Almost! Sora is just... Uh... Times... Four... The energetic, full of energy, boy. <laughs> Thank you. Still, it feels very embarrassing for me to do that. That's why I don't really uh, promote myself that much. I mean, it feels like I'm being into people's faces, and I don't like that. That's why if I promote myself, I would just mention it once, then leave it for a long time before mentioning again, then just leave it again for a long time. Uh, that's kind of how I do it. In other words, I still am shy and embarrassed and ashamed. Hey, I think Sora can pull it off. If it's Kyrie. I mean, if Kyrie tells him to, you know, dress up like a princess, I think Sora would do it. <laughs> right, Sunlight? <laughs> Now, 
for the darker color of the eyes. Also, how we shade the eyes here. Ah, you're finally here on the eyes. So for the eyes, we follow this type of shading. And I can't really explain it at this point, but I can just show it. So a shade here. Leave this part, like here. There's a light part here, also here. So make it dark in this part. There we go. And on this part. There we go. Same on the other side. Darken this part. And over here. There we go. So basically leave a crescent moon shape for the lights of the eyes. Now that that's done, we will now proceed to add the eye highlights, the shines on the eyes. And we're not going to select there. I almost selected there. My apologies. There. For the shine on the eyes, I think it's best if you select the color that's vibrant. In this case, I've already selected orange. If you wish to just make it a purple, light purple tone, go for it. But if you also wish to experiment on the lights, then that's also acceptable. Just be sure not to... What do you call this? Not to make it too dark that it's, it doesn't seem... It seems non-existent. <coughs> There we go. Now, for that circle, for that light ring, always use white. Always. And don't make it too, uh, don't make the light ring too thick like this. No. Just make it a sin like it was a stroke like that oh, it seems I made a mistake wait let me just repeat that <laughs> I did it on one layer Sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. And on the other side, there we go. It's almost done, actually. It's almost done. Yes. Garfield... Yandere. Hmm, sounds tempting. But the boy is too pure to be a Yandere. <laughs> okay. Now the earrings. We're almost done.
you're almost done. So the earrings for the metal color, I always use this particular pixel here on beads chain. I always use this pixel. There we go. Then add a bit of a light for the shadow of the earrings. Oh wait, I forgot! Ah, what am I doing to myself? Garfield's earrings are purple. What am I doing? There we go. Purple. Sorry about that. His earrings are purple. What am I doing? For the shade, just select something dark there. And color it. Then some lights. And there we go. Oh wait, the light here, the eyes. Don't forget this. This part where, wait, let me zoom out. This light part, that circle thing. Choose the darkest color using the normal pen. Using the normal pen brush, create a big, create a, a dark dot. Don't make it too big, okay? Then use the white. There we go. Then use that here as well. Then, hmm, that's too big. Hmm. Just add a few details. There you go. Ta-da! But wait, we are not yet done. Of course, Ritu, thank you for watching. Okay, we're not yet done. Not yet. You see this color on this on the line art? There are some black parts. There are some brown parts. We select that brown tone. And we create a clipping layer. Ooh. and add a random shade of that red just randomly randomly there we go Then again in this touch up layer, we adjust and add things that we wish to add. Just some finishing touches.
Okay. And there we go. And there you have Kingdom Hearts style. Good night, dears. Those who are leaving, and thank you for attending this stream. We just reached an end to our Kingdom Hearts style tutorial voiceover. I hope I somewhat managed to help you guys understand certain things as to how to do Kingdom Hearts style. I really do hope my blabber, random, random blabber words can, well, help you with your road to trying Kingdom Hearts style. I do apologize if I somehow keep pausing while I talk and... I keep running out of vocabulary. <laughs> I'm deeply sorry. But thank you again. I hope this helped. And I hope you managed to create your own wonderful personal Kingdom Hearts style artworks. If you do, please tag me on Twitter. I would like to see your works. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm glad to know that. Um, I will be ending the stream here. Thank you, everyone. And next time we'll be doing another style. I hope you all will be there again to learn. And I also hope you will be there <laughs> and learn somewhat something. <laughs> well, thank you again. Bye-bye.